going on guys? Welcome to Steve Does Stuff. I'm Steve and today I'm going to be introducing you to my E46 BMW drift car or as I affectionately call him, Klaus. Now you may have seen in the background of some of these videos as I've been building my truck camper but for the past gosh I don't know since September he's been sitting right here. Hasn't been going anywhere but the good news is Life is going back to normal. We are going drifting next weekend with a couple of the homies. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to dust them off, show them some love, clean them up, and introduce them to you guys on the channel. Let's get him out of here. Been about five months. Here goes nothing. <laughs> So before I get too far, I think Klaus deserves a bath. He's been sitting for quite a while. Back in 2016, uh, one of my good buddies, Rhett, bought his dream car, a beam swap A86 out of the States. We ended up living together a few months later. So for that entire year, we used my truck to take it drifting. I helped him work on it. We blew up a motor, we put in a new motor and uh, going to the track and watching him as well as a few other buddies that we met. I, I just couldn't take it anymore. After one drift event in September of 2017, I had three grand cash and I was like, I have to buy one of these cars. My whole stance on the thing was, I want to have the most amount of fun for the least amount of money. It was just a total fluke. When I was looking around for a drift car, I had three grand to spend and I wanted to get as much car for as little of that three grand as possible to leave the rest up for mod. I looked at G35s, I looked at all sorts of different things, didn't really know much about BMWs. But then this one showed up on Facebook Marketplace and I ended up walking away with an $1,800 BMW. I didn't really know much about them. The price was right on this one. It already had a welded diff, but full interior. It was basically like a daily drifter. And I really fell in love with it. It's probably best not to keep track of it. But the general figures that I have are, I bought this car for about $1,800. I bought used parts the whole way along. I found a used set of DC racing coilovers, BR series for 600 bucks. I go to the junkyard for parts, buy like uh, used Sparco seats. The one I have in my passenger seat is the Sparco Sprint, but it's expired, it was ripped, it's 50 bucks. I sewed it back together and it looks great. If I had to put a number on it, excluding the trailers and gas and time and events, probably anywhere from seven to ten thousand dollars doesn't look that great for seven to ten grand but it has always worked flawlessly <laughs> I wouldn't say that I built it so much as destroyed a good car. My whole philosophy, as I've said a few other times, is function over form. A car that works and looks okay is better than a car that looks great but doesn't work or is on jack stands or whatever. Starting right from the front, the motor, if you speak BMW, is an M52 TUB28 or a 2.8 liter BMW straight six. As far as the motor has gone, I haven't really done any mods. The only thing I would consider a modification is I've done catless eBay headers, but for the first three years that I own this car, my priority was ripping off everything that was going to stop me drifting on a weekend and didn't need to be there. AC system, 
all of the secondary air pump gone. The CCV system has been fully deleted and got a catch can that vents the atmosphere. Cooling system was upgraded uh, with a Mishimoto fan using that stock sh shroud. I do utilize all of the stock cooling components, but they have all been changed out. They've all been gone over. It's all new stuff, so I know it's going to work. The ECU is still the stock DME. I believe it's MS42, but it was tuned by a guy here in the GTA, the BMW daddy named Mark De Silva. Basically what he did after I took it to somebody who ruined an ECU and made the car almost undrivable because I'm a cheap prick is he took a base map tune for an MS42, deleted out all of the EWS, all of the speed tempers, all of the secondary air pumps, everything that was going to be a problem. This car starts and drives and the rev limiter has been raised to about 7,000. It's got all of about 180 horsepower going downhill, but it's fun. It's a low power fun car. And for some of the go-kart tracks the Drift Jam runs at, this thing is a ball. So for the drivetrain, uh, going back to the transmission, it's a five-speed ZF box. I haven't done anything really specific with that. I replaced the pressure plate, clutch, and flywheel with a Vallejo kit that I got off of Rock Auto. It's a single mass flywheel conversion. It is a full face Kevlar sprung clutch, and then just like a stock style OEM pressure plate. Beyond that, I've changed it to Guibo. I've also swapped in an upgraded rear end into this. True to my cheap ass nature, I found a diff out of an auto wagon that was a 346 diff for 40 bucks on Kijiji. Took it, welded it, slapped it in, and just kept on sending it. It's got Nerp Tech rear camera arms that I have spray painted in gold. All around these are BR Series uh, BC Racing coilovers that were used that I got for 600 bucks. As far as the chassis is concerned, I have just done a full Condor kit front to back. Engine mounts, trans mounts, subframe mounts, diff mounts, uh, rear trailing arm mounts, all poly steel reinforced, and that just totally transformed the car. It is so stiff now, and it is so clunky, and it vibrates like crazy. This thing is like pure misery, but this is a purpose-built car. Every decision I made was to make this better for drifting. So it's great for drifting. It's, it is a drift car. Interior, you guys have seen it before. I just ripped it out. I got two bucket seats. I ripped out the HVAC, took the uh, dash out of this thing, and then just absolutely took a hammer to every HVAC component in here because I didn't want it in there. I wanted to save weight because this thing's gutless and I just didn't want to be hauling around all this stuff under the dash. So that gives me a ton of room to work for running gauges. The biggest ticket item by far on this car was the FDF Mantis Angle Kit. FDF is a company out of Belleville, Ontario, my hometown. The guy who runs it, Josiah, is an absolute rain man when it comes to building and designing stuff. They made some of the most badass kits for cars, you know, all sorts of cars, and they're always building new ones. Back when I ordered this, they just went on sale. The only option was SLR Speed, and the kit was way too expensive out of the States with imports and duties and the exchange rate so this kit was 1400 bucks and it changed the car this thing is set up conservatively six degrees of camber up front quarter inch toe out and i'm not sure how much caster i'm running because i usually just do it in the driveway but it self steers beautifully and the only reason i put the kit in was because i wanted a little bit more confidence as i was trying to get towards tandeming the biggest issue i could find is not having enough angle to try and bail out or straighten up properly I wanted the angle kit to try and have a little bit more competency and especially I'm usually tandeming with my buddy's 86 who he has put a lot of money and a lot of effort into and I'm not going to be the guy to cave his door in. Right now the angle kit I think is set up to about 65 degrees but it's all the way dialed in and that's the least amount of camera I can run. So the wheels on that I run on the car, again, it's function over form. It came with three sets of 16s. And then I picked up another set of BMW 17 inch wheels. And then I also picked up a $300 pair of M parallels. Three out of the four are normal, but I run 18s up front and then I usually run 16s in the back. 16s are super cheap to find and I just pull them for free. I got a couple shops that who know I need free tires all the time. They mount them up and it's 10 bucks and away you go. So the plans for Klaus, uh, my immediate plans for him are keep driving him and just keep beating the absolute life out of him. Uh, for the last four years, it has taken everything like an absolute champion. I've crashed into a wall. I've had a coilover snap on me. Uh, I've had some issues, but like not really life ending ones. Ultimately, I would love to swap in an LS, like I truly try and build an LS and swap it in myself. I think I could do it, but it would be a, a pretty long process and a car that is on jack stands is not worth anything. So my 
my dream of dreams would be pick up an LS at the end of this year and then build it over winter and summer and then at the end of next year immediately throw the LS in and then just have the winter time to kind of go through it and make sure it's all good. From somebody who does it, my perspective would be have as much fun as you can for as little amount of money because that is the way to sustain this. The less cash that you're putting out to do crazy things to build your car, the more you're going to be able to spend your money on going to tracks, going to events and having fun. My thoughts on the drift scene overall in Ontario is we're really fortunate. Some of the people who run it here, Top Drift, CSCS, and Drift Jam do a fantastic job. From a spectator standpoint, Drift Jam has hands down does the best job of running any event here in Ontario. You know, fit, like people who are watching are allowed to just kind of walk around in your car. Whenever I go to those events and it's a normal year, I'm consistently taking people for ride alongs and seeing a smile on their face and listening to them scream is great. I think it's a ton of fun and it's so great to see kids out there, you know, basically ready to ruin their lives and buy a car. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. But overall, that is kind of how Klaus came to be my drift car. Over the last four years, I have loved every minute of it. You know, the memories you make at the track, the fun that you have, nothing beats the feeling of ripping around a track with some of your buddies. And that's the story of kind of how Klaus came to be. You know, he's an utter turd, but I absolutely love it. I'm hoping this video can help somebody else out there make some very poor financial decisions just like I did and give you a couple ideas of where to start, especially with BMW. But that's all for this time. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.